most of the current McLarens are running a flat plane V8. But did you know that the engine is actually older even than the McLaren F1? It wasn't particularly a clean sheet design and neither was it developed merely by McLaren. Today it is known as an incredibly efficient supercar power unit and it started in the 1980s at a Nissan race engine development department. In 1987, the Japanese attempted to build a Le Mans engine loosely based on the Nissan VH engine series. The VJ30 designed by Yoshikazu Ishikawa was, however, based on an old technology and could not stand a chance. It was re-engineered by Yoshimasa Hayashi, a namesake of the Japan's current foreign minister, and it was also enlarged to 3.5 liter for Group C dubbed the VRH. The V stands for a V engine, R for racing, and H is the 8th letter of the Latin alphabet, marking the 8th on the layout. Nissan would partner with Tom Walkinshaw Racing to build a 3.5 liter twin turbo GT1 engine, making 650 horsepower. The Nissan R390 GT1 was the one carrying the engine, but it raced only twice. A single R390 G21 production car exists in Nissan hands and some naturally aspirated 35 liter and 4 liters were racing in Indy as well as the GT500 GTR for the Super GT series. The old GT1 engine was practically useless and became a museum showpiece ever since 1987. Unexpectedly, it faced a different fate than anticipated. Tom Walkinshaw Racing sold it to McLaren as the engineering director, Neil Hanneman, chose it for the upcoming supercar. Allegedly, a Mercedes V8 was considered, but not approved due to a slightly longer footprint. The purchased VRH engine was then handed over to a British automotive company called Ricardo and the development began in mid-2009. Ricardo's job was the whole project from a concept to a completion, including all the manufacturing tools and processes to deliver a fully built and test engine. A fully assembled engine was then shipped to walking to be placed into a chassis. Basically, the McLaren engine is a former 900 plus horsepower 8000 RPM Group C engine. During development, the emphasis was placed on cooling, efficiency and durability. The extensive testing included a repetitive trial of the engine at a full power at 116 degrees of Celsius, cooled by a chill coolant of 20 degrees of Celsius. Over 1 million kilometers of road and track mileage had been covered at Nardo, Nordschleife, Idiada and then a further 3,000 hours simulating the Nürburgring using real-world data. All this took only 18 months and the engine was ready in January 2011. There were certain power level goals, which would require a 5-liter to 5.5-liter non-turbo engine. However, the VRH engine was a turbocharged platform from the beginning, which was perfect for their targets. Imagine that they basically tamed the race engine down to be emission compliant, but still provide exceptional performance and great reliability. However, many features of the original engine still remain on the current McLarens. The original engine weighed about 160 kg dry and gained about 29 kg. The design is pretty much what one would expect from a performance-oriented engine. It is an all-aluminum architecture with highly over-squared cylinders and a short engine block height. The crankshaft was a forged induction hardened piece with four counterweights. Being a flat plane unit weighing 16 kilograms, it is nearly the same length as an Audi 5 liter V10 crankshaft, possessing wider main and Conrad journals. They say that the bottom end is very robust and strong. The valve train has already been capable of 10,000 RPM thanks to a great flowing head with as large a fall valve setup as possible. 
37mm intakes and 29mm exhaust valves. Each cam has a cam phaser for variable valve timing and is chain driven from the crankshaft and gear driven between each other. Later engines received diamond coated rocker arms to prevent cam and rocker arm wear. Valve clearance is shim adjusted and the final engine volume was 3799cc thanks to a 93 by 69.9mm cylinder dimensions. Early engines suffered from cylinder liner cracks, but it was dealt with. The OE Nikasi liners are ok, but tend to crack on tuned cars. Often they are swapped for steel ones when power is being chased. Much of the efficiency was improved by isolating some crankcase base from others. The outer 1 and 4 from the inner 2 and 3 piston pairs as well as from the timing chain case to prevent pumping losses. This has a huge impact on both power and fuel consumption at high speeds. Valve covers and intake plenum are made of plastic composite. There were Mitsubishi single scroll turbochargers, port injection, later even with 2 per intake and the boost levels can reach 2.2 bars. As mentioned, it was a chain driven engine as the original gear drivetrain was ditched because of the noise. The very first car to adopt it was the MP412C, producing 600 horsepower and 600 Nm. 80% of the torque is available from 2000 rpm and the V8 received a 2013 International Engine of the Year award in the 3 liter to 4 liter category. The peak of the 3.8 liter was introduced in 2013 when McLaren P1 emerged. It had an M838TQ version of it, making up to 737 horsepower at 7500 rpm out of the combustion engine. Among other changes, the turbochargers made up to 2.4 bar of boot. <laughs> A stroke crankshaft version with a 73.5 mm stroke, retaining the 93 mm bores but carrying 8 counterweights now. The displacement was now 4 liters. However, 41% of the parts were changed or revised, and only 9% are a carryover between the 12C to 720S. The turbochargers received titanium aluminum turbines and electronically operated wastegates. It is still a port injected engine providing 720 horsepower and 770 Nm of torque in its first variant. Its power in the current models ranges between 620 to 845 horsepower in the Senna GTR LM. <laughs> the most current McLarens, although a 600 120 degree unit in the Artura now sits in the lineup too. The V8 is incredible thanks to the excellent fuel efficiency, astonishing power to weight ratio and phenomenal sound. <laughs>